16 teams took the field in hopes of winning the fourth ever World Baseball Classic in 2017. Team USA, of course, was one of those 16 teams, and they were favored to win it all prior to the 2017 WBC. However, in 20 games previous to the Classic, Team USA, cumulative, had just a 10-10 record. In their previous three appearances, they had fallen short in their hopes of bringing a title to the USA. But if they were going to win it all, 2017 was their year. They had the odds in their favor in an absolutely stacked roster. Some key players they were able to recruit include the likes of Christian Yelich, John Carlos Stanton, Nolan Arenado, Alex Bregman, Chris Archer, Adam Jones, among many other fantastic big league players who created a force to be reckoned with in their division, which was Pool C. For future reference, Canada, Colombia, and the Dominican Republic were the other three teams in their pool. Japan, South Korea, and Mexico were the host countries for the other three divisions, Pools A, B, and D. In the first round for Pool A, Israel and the Netherlands qualified and advanced to the second round, with Israel decimating their competition, finishing with a perfect 3-0 record. Israel shocked the world and took down South Korea, the host country for this division, and created a major upset for Round 1. The most exciting game had to be Game 1 where Team Israel shocked South Korea with an extra innings victory. Pool B was much more predictable than Pool A, with the host country Japan and Cuba advancing to the second round. Japan also unsurprisingly posted a perfect 3-0 record. Australia vs Cuba was the closest game of the bunch, with Cuba coming away with a 4-3 victory in this matchup. Pool C was another predictable outcome, with Team USA and Team DR advancing to the second round. Team DR took down Team USA in Game 2 and went on to post a 3-0 record. The two most memorable games from this pool include Team USA's walk-off win over Colombia thanks to an Adam Jones single, and the other was Team DR shocking Colombia with a 7-run 11th to eliminate them from the Classic. Pool D saw the second host team get eliminated in the first round, as Mexico was unable to keep up with Team Puerto Rico and Team Venezuela, both of which advanced to the second round. Team Puerto Rico emerged as a force to be reckoned with as they went 3-0 and posted a plus 22 run differential, meaning they outscored their opponents by 22 runs, the most of any team in the first round. The most notable game from this pool has to be the Venezuela vs Italy game, where Venezuela came away with an 11-10 victory in extra innings. At this point in the video, it's time to buckle your seatbelts because this is where things get interesting. Pool E and F formed as a result of the first round. Pool E consisted of Japan, Netherlands, Israel, and Cuba. Japan continued to show their desire to take home a World Baseball Classic win for the third time in four attempts, going 3-0 in the second round to advance to the championship round. The other team to advance from this pool, Team Netherlands, outscored their opponents by 21 runs, nearly matching the incredible feat of Team Puerto Rico, but with higher stakes in the second round. If you remember the 2017 WBC, Pool F is the moment that we've all been waiting for. The teams involved in this juggernaut of a division included Team Puerto Rico, Team USA, Team Dominican Republic, and Team Venezuela. Team DR and Puerto Rico were Team USA's biggest threats in the second round. Their hopes of winning it all hinged on beating two of the three best remaining teams in the Classic in order to advance to the championship round. Team DR had the help of some fantastic big league players, including Adrian Beltre, Robinson Cano, Manny Machado, and Carlos Santana, to go along with Luis Severino, Nelson Cruz, and Jose Batista. Team Puerto Rico also had a hefty list of talent, including Francisco Lindor, Javier Baez, Yadier Molina, Carlos Correa, Eddie Rosario, and Jose Barrios. Every game of the second round took place at Petco Park, home of the San Diego Padres. Team DR and Puerto Rico would battle it out in game one, and it ended up being a very close game, but there wasn't a significant amount of action. Both starters for either side were not able to make it past the fourth inning, and Team Puerto Rico, once they took the lead in the fourth, would hold on to it for the rest of the game thanks to six and two-thirds innings of shutout baseball. Puerto Rico utilized five different pitchers this game, but combined allowed just six hits, one run, and struck out ten. Team USA's first battle of the second round would be a surprisingly close game, with King Felix going five shutout innings for Team Venezuela to keep them in the game before they would relinquish their lead after a blow-up inning from Hector Rondon, who allowed two home runs hit by Adam Jones and Eric Hosmer. In the end, Team USA won the game 4-2 thanks to a standout effort from the back end of the bullpen. Team Venezuela then went on to play Team DR for their first matchup. The offense wasn't really present in this one, but Team DR didn't really need it, as they stifled Venezuela, shutting them out and striking out 14 batters. 3-0 was the final score of the game. The next matchup is by far the closest game of the second round, with Team Puerto Rico taking on Team USA. Team USA had homers from Buster Posey and Adam Jones, and even made a last-ditch effort to come back in the ninth inning, down by three, 
but unfortunately came up one run short as Edwin Diaz was able to shake off a two-out two-run triple from Brandon Crawford to get a strikeout to end the ball game. Team Puerto Rico took down Team USA 6-5 in this one. Team Venezuela's last game of the World Baseball Classic was over before it even began. Team Puerto Rico had the momentum on their side after a well-fought victory against Team USA and decided to completely crush the hopes and dreams of Team Venezuela, who they were looking to eliminate, as well as accomplish their goal of advancing, which would be 100% secured with a victory. Team Venezuela used six different pitchers this game, all of which allowed at least one run or more. In fact, two of the pitchers allowed three runs or more. No pitcher was safe this game. The culprit was not home runs, but walks. One home run was hit between both teams, and this was a 13-2 blowout, an insane amount of runs to be manufactured. Although walking eight hitters is just pretty much asking the opposing team to take advantage, which Team Puerto Rico absolutely accomplished this game. I mean, come on, Mike Avilas went four for five for crying out loud. All these insane outcomes now lead us up to the ultimate showdown of Pool F, the final game of the second round and a decisive game for both teams. Entering this game, both teams had played two very close games with neither team winning or losing by more than three runs. This game was handily the most attended game, beating out second place by more than 10,000 fans. Whichever team lost would be eliminated from the tournament. The stakes were the highest of any matchup throughout the entire Classic thus far. In terms of the matchup, Team USA sent out Danny Duffy to battle against Team DR's Irvin Santana. And if you don't remember, this was Irvin Santana's last hurrah in the major leagues, as in 2017 he put up 211 in a third innings of terrific baseball, putting up a 3.28 ERA in 33 starts. This arguably was his best season of his career, and it came at age 35 for the Minnesota Twins. Danny Duffy, on the other hand, had an ERA approaching 4. Team DR picked up an early 2-0 lead, thanks to an RBI double from Robinson Cano and an RBI single from Carlos Santana. Irvin Santana predictably started off this game well, tossing two scoreless innings to start, allowing just one hit. Team USA in the third inning, however, decided they weren't going down without a fight. Giancarlo Stanton and Jonathan Lucroy each picked up singles to put men on the corners with nobody out. The batter now was Ian Kinsler, who stepped up to the plate with a great RBI chance. Irvin Santana was able to get Kinsler out on a ground ball that Team DR decided to try and turn double play with. In the process, Kinsler reached first and picked up an RBI as Stanton was able to score. Christian Yelich now stepped in with one man on and two out. Team USA had a little two out magic on its side, as Yelich was able to drive a double that scored Ian Kinsler. The game was now tied at two apiece. Team USA was able to figure out Irvin Santana. Team DR on the bottom of the third was unable to answer back. Team USA, with some of that momentum on its side, turned this game on its head. With two outs and a runner on, Giancarlo Stanton came through big time with a two-run bomb that scored Brandon Crawford to give Team USA a two-run lead. Irvin Santana was immediately pulled from the game following the homer. Following this game's epic turn of events, the chaos would die down throughout the ensuing fifth and sixth innings. Dallin Batances took the ball from Fernando Rodney in the top of the seventh for Team DR, and Batances made quick work of Team USA, throwing a 1-2-3 inning and striking out two batters. The bottom of the seventh inning contains the most memorable play of the entire World Baseball Classic. Manny Machado was the leadoff hitter. With Team DR down by two, even one swing could get his team back into the game. Tyler Clipper took the mound for Team USA. He would post a 4.77 ERA in 16 to third innings for three different teams in 2017. By no means was this the kind of guy you would normally hand the ball to in order to hold down a two-run lead. Regardless, Clipper was tasked with facing the heart of Team DR's order, starting with Manny Machado. Machado worked the count into a favorable 2-1 hitter's count. Historically, a 2-1 count is the type of count where as a hitter, you look for a fastball. As a pitcher, if you're going to throw a fastball in this count, it just better not be down the middle. In the case of Clippard versus Machado, it was right down Broadway. And Manny Machado did not miss it. He pieced this ball up to the right center gap. Except this was not going to be a double, this was going to leave the yard. There was just one problem. Some guy named Adam Jones was patrolling center field this game, and he had one objective, and that was to rob Machado of a dinger. And he did exactly that. Get well out to right center field. Jones still on the move, running out of room, and he makes it! The local guy saves the day. Wow. That was awesome. Tyler Clipper just says, oh my God. Thank you. Adam Jones made one of the most fantastic catches that I've ever seen made, and he did it so effortlessly. It is not only iconic for occurring during the World Baseball Classic in a high leverage scenario, 
but both Machado and Jones were teammates together for the Baltimore Orioles in 2017. When Machado rounded first base and witnessed Jones' web gem for the ages, he tipped his batting helmet out to center field as a salute to the Orioles and Team USA captain Adam Jones. The biggest kicker for Team DR was that the next batter following this insane plot twist, Robinson Cano took Tyler Clifford deep. A home run that would have tied the game had Machado's home run not found its way into Adam Jones' glove. Immediately after the home run, Clifford was pulled. Nelson Cruz and Carlos Santana were both retired to end the most iconic moment of the 2017 WBC. Two teams in a battle of the ages, both facing elimination if they were to lose. After Team USA got a huge adrenaline boost from Adam Jones, they were able to score two insurance runs thanks to Andrew McCutcheon, who doubled off of Alex Colomay. Team DR in the bottom of the eighth was retired in order, and Team USA was unable to add to their 6-3 lead in the top of the ninth. Luke Gregerson, who would tally just one save for the Astros throughout the entire 2017 season, closed out Team USA's dramatic 6-3 victory over Team Dominican Republic. Team USA with this victory cemented itself as a Final Four team that would compete in the final championship round of the WBC. The four teams playing in the semifinals included Team Netherlands, Team Puerto Rico, Team Japan, and of course, Team USA. The venue for the semifinals and championship game would be held at Dodger Stadium. The first matchup was Team Netherlands versus Team Puerto Rico. This game was the definition of a nail-biter, with fans on the edge of their seats for 11 innings of baseball, before a walk-off sacrifice fly hit by Eddie Rosario to driving the winning run sent Team Puerto Rico to the championship game. On the other side of the semifinals bracket, Team USA took on Team Japan. Once again, fans got to witness an incredibly close game. The first run wouldn't come until the top of the fourth, when Andrew McCutcheon once again clutched up for Team USA driving in Christian Yelich on a single to left field. Besides this RBI single, Japan's pitcher Tomoyoki Sugano pitched brilliantly. He fired six innings of one-run ball to keep Japan within a run. After finishing the sixth, Team Japan was able to tie the game up with a home run from Ryosuke Kikuchi. With the score now tied up at one apiece, it was really up in the air as to who would win this game. Up until this point, Team Japan was undefeated with a 6-0 record. Team USA, on the other hand, was 4-2 having lost to Team Puerto Rico and Team DR in the previous two rounds. It all came down to the final two innings. This was a pleasant surprise considering that he is now a member of the New York Mets, but Kodai Senga pitched in this critical semifinals game. Senga had already pitched the seventh inning and absolutely dominated the three batters he faced, striking out Hosmer, McCutcheon, and Buster Posey. Senga was called upon to pitch the eighth inning as well and started off strong, striking out Stanton to extend his streak to four straight strikeouts. Brandon Crawford stepped up to the plate, looking to kickstart a rally for Team USA. He knocked a single into right field to bring up Ian Kinsler, who came up huge in a crucial spot in the game with a double to push the go-ahead run just 90 feet away. Now due up for Team USA was none other than Adam Jones, the hero of the winner-take-all final game of round two. Adam Jones was able to bring home the go-ahead run with a productive out, a ground out to the third baseman. Jones may not have gotten a base hit, but he was able to knock in the go-ahead run against one of Team Japan's finest pitchers, who showcased his insane arsenal by striking out four Team USA hitters in a row before a pair of base hits put them in a spot to seize control over the game. Yelich struck out with the runner on third to end the inning, but not before Team USA took a 2-1 lead. However, as the saying goes, it ain't over till it's over. And in this case, a one-run lead with six pitching outs remaining is by no means a done deal. Relief pitcher Mark Melanson took the ball for the bottom of the eighth and did not make things easy. He allowed a single, which Team Japan proceeded to strategize and sacrifice bunt the runner to second. Melanson did strike out the following hitter for the second out, but then walked former MLB player Nori Aoki to bring up current MLB player Yoshi Tsutsugo with two runners on and two out. Tsutsugo ran into some bad luck and lined out to Andrew McCutcheon to end Team Japan's threat in the bottom of the eighth. Kodai Sengo would not return for the ninth inning against Team USA. And despite allowing a one-out double to Eric Hosmer, which shut down Team USA to give Team Japan one last shot in the WBC, facing elimination. With a chance at the championship game within reach, Team USA called upon their closer, Luke Gregerson, who also saved the clinching game against Team DR in the second round. Gregerson was fantastic, inducing back-to-back -back ground balls to start the inning, and striking out the final hitter to send Team USA to the championship game, in search of their first World Baseball Classic win in the tournament's young history. Before we discuss the championship game, let's recap. Team USA along its journey through the World Baseball Classic faced plenty of close calls that could have gone either way. But along the way, 
Team USA was able to overcome any challenges they were presented with, and with their backs up against the wall in the second round, they showed out against the juggernaut Team DR, and were able to punch their ticket to the semifinals. Once again, they were tasked with facing one of the tournament's finest ball clubs in Team Japan. They put up an incredible fight, and Team Japan unfortunately found themselves on the wrong end of a one-run game. And all of this leads us into the championship game. With over 51,000 people in attendance, Team USA squared off to face Team Puerto Rico at Dodger Stadium. The pitching matchup was Marcus Stroman for Team USA versus Seth Lugo for Team Puerto Rico. Up until this point, Puerto Rico had not lost a game, entering the game undefeated at 7-0. Wow. Marcus Stroman rose to the occasion and put together a fantastic start in which he fired six shutout innings allowing just one hit. Along the way, Team USA's offense was present throughout. Ian Kinsler got the adrenaline going with a two-run dinger in the top of the third inning, scoring Jonathan Lucroy. Two innings later, Christian Yelich and Andrew McCutcheon hit RBI singles to put USA on top 4-0 through the fifth inning. Team Puerto Rico's offense was not able to find answers with Stroman on the mound. Francisco Lindor and Carlos Correa were both stymied throughout the championship game, going 0-4. for Entering the seventh, this game was still within reach for Team Puerto Rico, it's just a four-run deficit. But unfortunately for Jose Barrios, the seventh was a meltdown inning. The Team USA two-out magic made a return in grand fashion to the championship game, with Brandon Crawford delivering a two-run single to put Team USA up six to nothing. After a pitching change, still with runners on, Giancarlo Stanton delivered an RBI single to tack on a seventh run for Team USA. Marcus Stroman took a no-hitter into the seventh before allowing a leadoff double to Angel Pagan. This double may have ended Stroman's day, but not before he put together the best pitching performance from a Team USA starter throughout the entire Classic. Even with the leadoff double, Team Puerto Rico was unable to answer back in the bottom of the seventh, which opened the door for Team USA to keep the momentum. In the eighth inning, Team USA strung together three singles in a row to collect another insurance run to now make it an eight nothing ballgame. Yadier Molina led off the eighth inning with a single, but that was immediately erased after a Javier Baez double play. Team Puerto Rico entered the ninth inning with the odds heavily stacked against them. Team USA's bullpen continued to dominate the opposition and shut down Team Puerto Rico throughout the final three innings. David Robertson got Carlos Correa to ground out to secure Team USA's first World Baseball Classic championship. Unsurprisingly, after his terrific six innings of work, Marcus Stroman earned himself the MVP honors for Team USA. Throughout the Classic, he made three starts and posted a 2.35 ERA in 15 and a third innings. What a roller coaster the 2017 World Baseball Classic was, to say the least. I had a blast researching for this video as I totally forgot just how chaotic and insane some of these games were. The 2017 WBC set a high bar for entertainment, and it will be extremely difficult for the 2023 Classic to reach the heights that we saw from Adam Jones and company six years ago. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.